insurance. Oh, with it. She was going around. Good morning. Thanks for joining us here at the National Archives in the McGowan Theater, and a special welcome to those of you who are joining us on our YouTube channel. The FOIA Advisory Committee is charged with the important task of looking broadly at the challenges that agency FOIA programs face now and will also face in the future particularly in light of an ever-increasing volume of electronic records. The committee's work during this term serves as a foundation for charting a course for how FOIA should operate in the future. And I want to thank all of you uh, committee members for your dedication to this committee's important work over the last two years. And I want to commend you for approaching this work in the spirit of collaboration. I know that the committee's three subcommittees, Search, Proactive Disclosure, and Efficiency and Resources, have been very busy over the last couple of years. I want to thank, in particular, the six subcommittee co-chairs for their active participation and leadership. Nate Jones and Logan, Logan Perrell of the Search Subcommittee, Martha Quoka and Sarah Kotler of the Proactive Disclosure Committee, and Chris Knox and Ginger McCall of the Efficiency and Resources Committee. I know that during the committee's January 16th meeting, the committee voted unanimously to approve several recommendations and best practices to improve the administration of FOIA. And I also understand that during today's meeting, you'll be considering a draft of your final report and recommendations and deliberating to finalize that. And I look forward to receiving and reviewing the committee's final report and recommendations. And um, more importantly, look forward to figuring out how to implement them. So you have my commitment to, um, to support your work. And at this time, I'd like to recognize committee members here today by presenting each with a certificate and a small token of appreciation. So please come up when your name is called and pose for the official photograph for the record. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, I just want to take a second to say that we have ordered these lovely uh, challenge coins slash uh, paperweights. Um, they look like this. They're, there's a wonderful logo on the front and the OGIS logo on the back. Unfortunately, there is a little bit of a delay in the order. These are our prototypes. But I wanted to assure every one of the members of this committee that we'll be getting one. So thank you. Um, so when I call your name, please go up for um, your certificate and a photo opportunity with the archivist. Michael Bekesha, Judicial Watch. <laughs> Michael Bell, Department of Health and Human Services. Nate Jones, National Security Archive. Chris Knox, Deloitte.
Raynell Lazier, Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. Sean Moulton, Project on Government Oversight. Logan Perel, Department of the Treasury. David Pritzker, Administrative Conference of the United States. Melanie Paste, U.S. Department of Justice. Tom Sussman, American Bar Association. And last but really not least, Amy Bennett, our designated federal officer. I think she deserves a really big round of applause. Yay, Amy. Mic on, can you guys hear me? Okay, good. So good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Alina Simo. I am the chair of this uh, FOIA advisory committee, and I'm very excited to welcome you to our final uh, meeting of the 2016-2018 term. I'm a little sad, um, but uh, it, every, all good things have to come to an end. Um, so we are um, going to have a few items on our agenda. Some of them are going to be uh, housekeeping, uh, as we normally do. Um, I will start with asking the members to go around and introduce themselves. I know we have several members on the phone, so, uh, and I apologize that you could not be here to get your certificate, but we will mail it to you. Um, also, the challenge point, don't forget that. <laughs> um, we um, will go through the, the housekeeping measures, and um, we will obviously uh, be working primarily today on the committee's final report and recommendations. So let's begin by introducing all of our committee members. Uh, let's start with the folks who are on the phone. If you could please in introduce yourself, state your profession and affiliation. Ginger McCall. Uh, Ginger McCall, I am currently unaffiliated, uh, although I was affiliated with the Department of Labor and will soon be affiliated with the state of Oregon. Okay, can everyone hear her? James Hirschberg. I'm a historian at George Washington University. Welcome. Stephanie Carr, and I'm the FOIA officer for the Office of Secretary of Defense Joint Staff. James Valvo, Cause of Action Institute. Hi, I'm Jill Eggleston. I'm the FOIA officer for USCIS. We have Mark Cuoco with us. Tara Kotler, uh, United States Food and Drug Administration FOIA officer. Hi, Sarah. Uh, Margaret or Lynn Walsh? Going once, going twice. Okay, they're not here, so um, they will not be getting their points. <laughs> <laughs> they still get their certificate. Yeah, maybe. Uh, let's hear from those of you um, sitting at the table today. Let's start with the end of the table to my right. So David, please introduce yourself your name and your affiliation. Yes, I, I'm David Pritzker. I'm Deputy General Counsel of the Administrative Conference of the United States. Hi, Raynell Lazier, FOIA Manager at uh, CFPB Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. Chris Knox, Forensic Managing Director at Deloitte. Mike Bell, Public Liaison for Department of Health and Human Services. Tom Sussman, Director of Governmental Affairs for the American Bar Association. Melanie Paste, Director of Office of Information Policy, DOJ. Sean Moulton, Open Government Manager, Project on Government Oversight. Logan Perel, I'm an attorney in the Office of Chief Counsel uh, at the uh, Office of Foreign Assets Control Department of Treasury. Uh, Nate Jones, Director of the FOIA Project, National Security Archive. Michael Bakesha, Attorney at Judicial Watch. Okay, great. Thanks, everyone, for introducing yourselves. Um, just a reminder, and I'll try to remind you as we go along, the folks on the phone, there has to be a pause between the time they 
turn the mics on for the folks on the phone and then turn our mics back on or something along those lines. So mm -hmm. anyway, just count to 10 um, <laughs> to give them a chance to pipe in and then we can, uh, we can come back in. Um, so uh, let's talk about the, uh, the fact that this committee provides a forum for public discussion of FOIA issues, offers members of the public uh, the opportunity to provide feedback and ideas for improving the FOIA process. At the end of today's meeting, we are going to have opportunity for public comments. We do look forward to hearing from any non-committee members who have thoughts or comments to share. Uh, we are also monitoring the live stream, so if you have any comments, you may submit, submit them and we will read them during the comment period at the end. Um, while this is the last meeting of our current term, the archivist uh, plans to renew the committee's charter for another two-year term. And uh, we recently, yesterday, published a call for nominations. Uh, the nomination deadline is June 1st. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, please consider nominating yourselves or have someone else nominate you. Uh, to promote openness, transparency, and public engagement, we post all committee updates and information to our website, our blog, and on Twitter at, at FOIA underscore ombuds. Uh, the URLs to these sites are on the slides behind me. Uh, stay up to date on the latest OGIS and FOIA Advisory Committee news, activities, and events by following us on Twitter. Information about the committee, including members' biographies, committee documents, are available on the OGIS website. As I stated earlier, we are live streaming this meeting. We will make the video transcript and meeting materials available on the committee's webpage as soon as possible. We expect to have all the meeting uh, material available on our website within 30 days, so please bear with us. Uh, thank you in advance for your patience and understanding. Uh, we will take a 15-minute break halfway through the meeting at approximately 11.30, although I remain committed to trying to end by noon. Um, during the break, you may wish to purchase food or drink from Charters Cafe located on this level. As a reminder, unfortunately, no food or drink is allowed in the theater. Uh, please note there are restrooms directly outside the theater and another set downstairs near the cafe. So, uh, a couple more housekeeping matters and we'll get right into business. Uh, let's turn first our attention to the approval of our January 16th meeting minutes. I understand that everyone on the committee has had a chance to review and comment on the minutes. Uh, all comments have been received and incorporated and I have certified the minutes. Um, so I was going to take a minute now just to remind everyone about the voting procedures uh, and I can also do it later just in case. Amy tells me that in your packets um, there is a handy dandy guide uh, for voting. Um, there are um, uh, basically several roles, but uh, essentially any member of the committee can move to vote on a recommendation. It does not to be, not, sorry, the motion does not need to be seconded, although we have tended to do that in the past because it just feels better, right? <laughs> um, the vote can pass by unanimous decision. Uh, every voting member except abstentions is in favor of or opposed to a particular motion. General consensus less than, uh, at least, sorry, two-thirds of the total votes cast are in favor of or, as, or opposed to a particular motion, or general majority, which is when a majority of the total votes cast are in favor of or opposed to a particular motion. In the event of a tie, we will reopen discussion and the committee will continue to vote until there is a majority. As a reminder, any member can make a motion to vote. Um, unfortunately, the motion does not have to be seconded. If you feel like it, please go ahead. Um, since we do have members on the phone, we are going to take a voice vote. Uh, so for uh, voting the minutes, um, if, uh, if I can have a motion in favor of moving for the minutes to be entered into the record. So moved. Thank you. All in, thank you, Sean. <laughs> thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 All on the phone? Aye. Okay. Uh, all opposed? Any abstentions? I think you have unanimous vote on the minutes. The minutes have been approved, will be available for public inspection on the committee's website. So our primary order of business for today is to discuss and vote on the committee's final report and recommendations. Um, and uh, I, I believe approximately one week ago, we went ahead and posted the draft report 
uh, on the website. I, I do want to take a minute, this was not in my script, to thank um, the working group um, who did a really outstanding job of trying to get everything together, uh, and that would be Nate. Uh, I'm looking around the table to help me. Michael Bell, uh, Ginger McCall, David Pritzker, and Chris Knox. And thank you again to all of you. I know it was, you know, it was a hard job, but we pulled it together. Um, before we get into this, uh, the heart of the report, I know we have one order of business that we held over from our last meeting. Uh, as you may remember, we had a rigorous discussion uh, regarding one of the recommendations of the Proactive Disclosure Subcommittee. Uh, we decided to postpone a vote on that recommendation until the committee had more time to conduct research and discuss the proposal. Um, I do understand the subcommittee has come to an agreement regarding the recommendation, and they are ready to ask the full committee to vote on the proposal. Um, so um, would anyone care to summarize the issue, or, or do we want Amy to summarize it? Amy, you're on. Great, thank you, Alina, and thank you to the Proactive Disclosure Subcommittee uh, and to Ginger McCall for revisiting this issue again. As a reminder, uh, there were uh, some concerns about a recommendation uh, that as a best practice, agencies post um, a full contact information for all employees. There was a particular concern about um, um, potential privacy and security issues with that uh, best practice. The um, Ginger McCall did some additional research to find out how agencies were handling this issue. Uh, she shared that with the subcommittee and after a great deal of discussion, uh, the subcommittee determined that they would go ahead and um, recommend that as a best practice, agencies should post an organizational chart with contact information for, um, for the individual agencies. Of course, if agencies do want to post all contact information, the committee um, is in support of that, but they do understand that um, agencies face a variety of concerns uh, and that they should have discretion in how they, um, they treat all of their employee information. Does anybody want to add to that or disagree with my summary? Sarah, do you want to add anything to that? Uh, I'll just, uh, this oh, is Sean. Thank you. I'll just jump in and say, uh, I think that's a, a good summary of, of where we came out, although uh, the, I would disagree with that last point about there was agreement that agencies should have discretion around um, of posting of the information. There were members of the subcommittee that still felt uh, that the recommendation should be uh, that all contact information with certain subprovisions should be posted. Uh, and so I think there was just a lack of agreement on getting to that point, and there was agreement on what the best practice we, we put in uh, to the draft, which is organizational chart and contact for all offices. Okay. Thanks, Sean. All right. Anyone else want to comment on the proposal? David. I'm I'm going to offer an amendment at the appropriate time, and I don't know whether that's now or later, about the way this is worded toward the end of the draft report. I can tell you what are it we, is. Are we talking about this particular yes. subcommittee recommendation? Oh, okay. we're, we're talking about this subject. Sure. Well, let me just tell you what it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we're all yours. This is on page 25, uh, near the top of the page. And as proposed, apparently by Melanie, uh, the way it would read is during its discussions, the, first, the full committee examined agency practices with respect to the release of employee contact information. While some agencies routinely publish contact data for all employees, officials at several agencies identified concerns that make them unwilling to post contact information about their individual employees, then it's the rest of the sentence that I want to amend. Thus, the committee decided not to include a recommendation on the treatment of contact information. Well, we do have a recommendation on contact information. It's just not for individual employees. So my suggested further amendment is to add at the end of the sentence, for individual employees. Yeah, that's good, David. May I move that? Yes, please move. <laughs> Done. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, well, with that, uh, anyone else have any other comments? 
Okay. Um, so with that amendment, should we go ahead and vote on this particular provision? Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Um, all those on the phone? Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. Aye. Uh, do I have any um, opposed? Do I have any abstentions? I'll continue to abstain. Okay. So, great. That was done. The rest of the report's going to go very smoothly. <laughs> um, so, um, let's go ahead and turn our attention now to the report. Um, Amy did include a, a red, uh, red line copy in, in the folders. It's a beautiful color, so you can tell all the color differences. Um, and Amy will now be listening and making changes as we go along uh, to make sure that we could try to get to some consensus on, on all of these edits that we've received. No, we're not doing that. Oh, no, I was just, um, I was just going to ask if you could please put the, the um, report. The report. Thank there you. There we go. Thank you. So as we make our way through the report, um, we'll try to resolve all the edits today. That is my goal. And if you obviously have any other edits you want to suggest, today is the day. Uh, speak now or forever hold your peace. Uh, once we've completed our discussion and have consensus on the language, I will entertain a motion to vote on the final report and recommendations. Um, any questions before we begin? Questions? Questions on the phone? Okay. Um, Amy, tell us when you're ready. I'm ready. All right. Do you want to drive? Do you want to? Do you want me to just start going through? We'll go line by line if we have to. I, I know I that think, sounds a little painful. I know it, it is painful, but um, we, it's a necessary evil. The best way to do so it. So yes. let's turn our attention to page. I don't think anyone has comments on the first or second page. I assume. <laughs> Table of contents. Table of contents. <laughs> I'm just double checking. No, uh, and just to just to be clear, we know that there are some issues with the page numbers. Uh, once the committee finishes its discussion today, we just will go back, ensure that the pages are correct, uh, that, and we will do, give another read through for any typos that are created from redlining, um, and before we publish the final report. Okay. Uh, so page three, executive summary. Uh, everyone okay with? Taking out the quotes, is that what the change is? Uh, yeah. So the, it was just a question of consistency. We had um, quotes yes. around some of them and, and not around others. So, so we're voting for no for quotes. Okay. Everyone okay with that? All right. Uh, next change is uh, next paragraph, uh, the administration on the first line. Wasn't the archivist the one who made the announcements? Maybe we, just we, if we made this archivist instead of administration, since it's the same person that... Yeah, that would work. I think that works. Yeah, I think that's fine. That's good. Everyone okay with that? Folks on the phone, did you hear that? Okay. Uh, moving right along. Third paragraph uh, during the 2016-2018 term. So we have from where to in which... And strike and take action. Everyone okay with that? Yes. 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 Okay. Next paragraph. The committee identified and approved seven recommendations for the archivist. Everyone all right with that? Um, given Amy's uh, definition of what you, the reason unanimously approved uh, was struck was because of the abstentions, but mm -hmm. unanimously actually is defined as everyone who voted voting in favor, Except not counting abstentions. abstentions. So we can actually leave unanimously uh, approved in. So I believe. Maybe, I think we should then note the abstentions, like in a footnote. That'd would be, be fine. fine with me. Yes, that's uh, fine. I just, it's just yep. for clarity. I mean, yep, just, I agree. Everyone okay with that? Footnote. Amy, are we going too fast? Uh, no, but it, it will take me just a second sure. to add a footnote. And do we want the word supported back in? Or do I we want approved? Approved is, approved is good. Yeah. Everyone's good it was with just approved. That I was okay. Yeah. Great. Amy, can I go on to the next paragraph? Uh, yes, as long Mark. as you're okay with me just saying um, insert. Yes. Yeah, just, yeah. Yes. I'm sure it'll be yeah. fine. 
Um, next paragraph, the committee also recommended that the archivist consider, is everyone all right with that? Uh, next sentence, to advance adoption of these practices was struck uh, and instead replaced by specifically. Everyone all right with that? Last line in that paragraph, identify procedures. Uh, we struck strategies and methods to improve compliance. Everyone all right with that? Okay. Made it through four paragraphs. Yeah. Can we take a break now? Yeah. And okay. this, this is, these two pages are the most. I know. Um, all right. So now I'm on the first bulleted paragraph, improving proactive disclosure. Uh, the committee has identified and was struck, has identified and. So that it would now read, the committee recommends that the archivist direct OGIS to publish as a best practice that agencies proactively post specific categories of records, et cetera. Everyone all right with that change? I'm abstaining. I think this silence means for people. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And folks on the phone, uh, make sure you speak up if you're concerned about anything, okay? Can I make an edit to it? A proposed edit would be to add identified categories, those specific identified categories. There's a list in the back of the phone. Yes, there is a list. Uh, where, so where do you want to add the slogan? I'm sorry. Uh, proactively post. Um, Specific, specific um, say specific identified categories of records, or specifically identified. Proactively identify and post. You already say it already says specific categories. You're trying to get it. I mean, that's he wants identified. Trying. We're trying. I'm just trying to add the fact that the, the subcommittee or the committee has identified, identified what below. what agencies should be posting. Categories of records identified below before including calendars? That works. How about, or identified in front? What about, uh, we have a list there including category calendars of top officials, unclassified reports to Congress. We can make it, uh, instead of N, FOIA logs, FOIA logs, and other uh, categories identified below. below. That's good. Logan, is that okay with you? Yes. Okay. Are you referring to identified in the recommendation or identified by the agency? In the recommendation. Well, then let's say so. All right, but below is fine. Below is fine. Because it shows it's in this report. It's in the report. Yeah. Okay. Uh, are we good for that sentence? The next sentence, we struck the committee. Well, we struck the committee. So it would read, the best practice also offers methods to ensure FOIA logs are most useful and provides considerations for agencies when identifying additional areas for proactive disclosure. Uh, everyone's good. I'm seeing lots of nods. Okay, great. All right, next, par next bulleted uh, paragraph. It starts with balancing proactive disclosure. Uh, the changes will now read, the committee recommends that the archivist direct OGIS to publish as a best practice that agencies avoid the removal of documents already posted on agency websites because the records are not compliant with Section 508 of the Rehabilitation Act of 1973. I'll skip the site. That's fine. Uh, Nate. I want to make sure you're okay with that. Yep, I'm okay. okay. Uh, David. Uh, I would, I prefer on the fourth line of this paragraph, keeping that are not currently compliant. I don't think it's a matter of cause. Well, there could be other reasons that they needed to take those documents down. Well, then that's outside the scope of what we're recommending. Whose change was that? Whose change was that? Uh, it was pronounced. No, you don't. And you're arguing. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't have it on my version. Oh, this is Raynell. I'm sorry. Raynell, do you want to it's fine. defend yourself? No, it's, <laughs> it's fine. I just, um, I thought that there could be other reasons why somebody would need to take those records down, and this is suggesting that they don't um, maintain that discretion. So, Where I'm coming from is that I thought the whole thrust of what we discussed and concluded was if it's already there, don't take it down. If it, if just because somebody is saying it's not compliant. And I think 
that is what we talked about. Just because of 508, if there's another issue unrelated to 508, they may to take it down. But that's, that's outside the scope of what we're, we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Which is why the, the recommendation was to say because the records are not compliant to kind of specify what, what our recommendation involves. Now I understand your point. I withdraw my suggestion. <laughs> okay, thank you. Oh, good job, Raina. <laughs> oh, excuse me, could I make yes, uh, one quick sure, point? It looks like with Melanie's changes, we basically go from the committee encourages to recommends. Didn't we have a discussion that we didn't want to make, quote, legal recommendations? Is this stronger than what we had talked about before? Because we didn't want to tell agencies to leave a non-compliant document up there. We wanted to let them make that determination on their own. Does that make sense from our prior discussion? But my, my change was just, it's the whole rest of it, that this is a best, we're recommend, the committee is recommending to the archivist that OGIS publishes a best practice. So okay. it's the, it, we're just making sure that the wording of this matches actually what's being recommended by the committee. Okay, I just wanted to check, thank okay. you. Everyone okay with that? Okay, uh, so that takes us to the next sentence. Instead, best practice would be to remediate such documents. Everyone all right with that? It's nice and simple. Um, the best practice. Or A. Hi. Hi. Next one. Yeah, A. A, best practice. Sure. Folks on the phone? Did we lose the folks on the phone? But if they, if they can't hear us, we can't meaningfully contribute. We can hear you. We can hear you. Can everyone just say hi, show a sign of life? Can you all hear us? Yes. Yes. Okay, uh, we're going to need to go back and redo that section on 508 again because I was trying to participate and no one was hearing me. Is that Ginger, by the way? Yes. This okay. is Ginger. So, do you want us to go back to the beginning of that paragraph? Yeah, I mean, I'm not even clear where we are right now because we've been trying to sort out this issue of whether or not we're being heard. So, can we just have that discussion again, please? Sure. Uh, so, reminding to the first sentence, uh, the committee recommends that the archivist direct OGIS to publish as a best practice that agencies avoid the removal of documents already posted on agency websites, and I think that was uh, no, no disagreement there. Uh, and then we, we had a little bit of a scuttlebutt on the striking out of that there are, that are not currently. Um, and Reynaud's uh, change is to say because the records are not compliant with Section 508 of the Rehabilitation Act. Ginger, is that okay? Uh, just a second. I'm just reading over it. Uh, yeah, I think, I, I, you know, we've been over this before, and the problem is that we don't want to be making a legal recommendation that agencies keep things up on their website that are not compliant with, the, with 508. And this, again, goes back to sounding like a recommendation that agencies keep things up on their website. Yeah, so Even if they're not compliant with the act. And, and I mean, the discussion, and I heard what David said, and I, I strongly disagree with that. What we went over here and what we ended up agreeing to was that agencies shouldn't take things down and use 508 as an excuse. But I mean, as a lawyer, I have to say, if you're an agency and you can get sued for monetary damages for having continuing to have up on your website something that's not compliant with the law, we shouldn't be recommending recommending that agencies keep those things up on their website. I can understand our recommendation for saying don't use 508 as an excuse to take things down. That when it's just a front, but I, we, I just can't make this recommendation if we're going to ask them to keep things up on their websites that aren't compliant. I'm not quite reading the, the sentence that way, because what I'm reading is that we're, the committee is asking the archivist to direct OGIS to publish a best practice. A best practice. It's clear that it's a best practice. The agency is avoid the removal of documents already posted on the website because the records are not compliant with Section 508. Yeah, I, I mean, I, that's just not a recommendation that I, as a lawyer, would get behind. I mean, the archivist can't even make a legal recommendation there that agencies continue to violate 508. So I think it's better to just vote But on this the one archivist would be publishing best practices, not publishing recommendations. 
I, I think that is no, the distinction I mean, I, there. I, I obviously share Ginger's concern about the, and Michael, I think, had the same concern about the, we, do, we obviously in any form or capacity, we don't want to be suggesting that agencies violate Section 508 or condone the violation of 508. So even though we have it now, it's, it's down to it's a best practice, it, it's still saying avoid removal when they're not compliant. And if, they, if you're required to remove them because they're not compliant, then- You're not then required to remove them. You're required to make them compliant. Compliant. And leave them up while you remediate, which is what the recommendation, the very next sentence, instead best mm -hmm. practice right. will be to remediate, remediate such them. documents. That's still right. so that's or conduct an undue burden language, review as, we agreed as to the it. statute. Yeah. yeah. In our work so it's everyone's talking at once. With Hold the on. compromise that we came to, I'm okay with that language, but I am not okay with these changes. Was that gender saying you're not okay with the changes? Excuse me. Hi, this is Beverly, your captioner, and I am really having a hard time. People are all speaking at one time, and I'm not able to caption in that way, so people could pause and wait for somebody to stop speaking before they begin. It would really help. Thanks. Great. All right. I, I have a suggestion. Yes. What if we condense this down instead of having this, the first sentence saying, because the records are not compliant, like merge that with the second sentence about meet, remediate. So that it so that it's very clear from the beginning that what we're, what your the recommendation is or that the best practice would be. So it would be like instead of saying avoid removal, let's say the committee recommend as a best practice that agencies remediate documents that are not compliant with 508 rather than removing them from the red website. So that you get remediate right up at the front. I don't this is Nate Jones. I don't think I can go for that. Um, my constituents see that it's a hot topic, the removal of documents. So we saw that client data was removed, or um, climate data was removed due to 508. We had the congressional hearings where people were, Congress people were upset that documents were being removed or not posted due to 508 concerns. The way I feel, I think we had several votes on this and hashed out language that we all had consensus on in the drafting committee. So as a worst, I would go, I'm okay with these changes generally, but as a worst, I would recommend going back to what we hashed out in the drafting committee that Ginger agreed on rather than um, tweaking or reopening the issue of what's, what can we recommend about removing and undue burden, et cetera, that we spent a long time coming to unanimous consensus on with, with abstentions. Anyone on the phone want to comment? Yes, this is James Hirschberg. I strongly endorse Nate Jones's comments. I do not think 508 should be used as a reason to ever remove documents. And I think uh, historians are particularly concerned because there are many non-electronic originating documents that are not easily convertible to uh, electronic form. So I strongly uh, endorse Nate's comments. Can we just- This is Ginger, is it, can you hear me? Yes. I can hear you, Ginger. It's Sarah. But I'm Definitely. all talking. Yes, we can hear you. Can you hear me, please? Can the room hear me? Yes, we can all hear you in the room. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, I agree with Nate. I think that we spent a lot of time hashing out this consensus language, and I think that we should stick with it instead of changing it now. And this is Sarah Collar. I agree as well. Are we talking about the language? So, that so this is Bethany Carr. Can we get a reminder of what that language was? Yeah, I was going to say, what is it then? So the language, I think, originally before Melanie's edit, I guess, right? Well, but my my, my edit is nothing substantive. My edit is that just to, is making it clear that it's a best practice, uh, it's not to the merits of this. So this is Sean. I I think the point is that the the drafting committee made some changes from the original language when they put this together into a full report. Uh, and I, d I don't have the original subcommittees kind of agreed upon language. Uh, so the, the original language no, as done. written by the, the working group is Period. the committee, the committee um, encourages agencies to avoid the removal of documents already posted on agency websites that are not currently compliant with section 508 of the Rehabilitation Act as amended. To get at your edit, Melanie, um, 
do you think that we could, instead of just starting with the committee encourages agencies, we can say as a best practice, the committee encourages? Well, the, 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 that's the, it, the committee isn't directly doing this. The committee is making a recommendation to the archivist to include as a best practice. That's the, that's as, the. As a best practice to be published by, by OGIS. Right. So I mean, my my edits don't go to the merits of the, this this you know go don't go to the substance. They're they're more to the procedural implementation of this. So in some ways, it seems to me like we're back to like that it's okay as it is with my edit my procedural edit. I think so. Well, I think the language is taking out encourage encourages that's the problem so why don't we just have the committee recommends that the archive as directs so just to no. publish it as a best practice that agencies best practice well, that encourages agencies that encourages agencies to avoid removal of, of, of documents who can anyone speak up to who struck encourages agencies was that right now was that you maybe and part of your edit no. i can't tell no i think it would no, have been me as part of mine okay would you be willing to go back to encourages agencies? Or just add encourages before no agencies? Right. To publish as a best practice. That encourages agencies. To publish a best practice that encourages agencies or publish as a best practice that agencies are encouraged? Could, I'd see it's. Could we just, uh, this is Sean, could we just have at the archivist uh, direct OGIS to encourage agencies and yep. leave it up to OGIS to figure out whether yeah. it's a best practice or a memo or? Yeah, but the, the best, yeah, that it doesn't go with what, we're, what an advisory committee can do. It, it, the, the construct here is that it's recommending that OGIS publish a best practice. So we're trying to be clear that we're making um, a we're, we're recommending like a this is a best practice, yeah. not a recommendation. So why don't we just have to publish a best practice encouraging agencies instead of that encourages, mm -hmm. use encouraging. Yeah, yep. maybe that does it. That's good, Michael. Is everyone okay mm -hmm. with that? On the phone. And the last part of the sentence we still need to resolve, do we want to go back, are we okay with uh, Raynell's change because the records are not compliant versus what we had before that are not currently. This is Ginger. I am not okay with that change. Ah. Raynell, would you be willing to concede? I am. Okay. So leave it as that. Or Stat. Not. All right. So we're going to go back to Ginger. You won that point. Um, <laughs> on agency websites that are not currently compliant with Section 508 of the Rehab Act. Everyone good with that? One quick second. Yes. Sure. Can you accept the changes? Yeah, I can't remember. <laughs> it's going to hurt my gosh. I know. It's easier to read that way. Okay. Yep. Yep. Ginger, are you okay with that sentence? Do you want us to read it to you, Ginger? Yeah. Could you read it? I would like it too. Yeah. It's sure. just hard to see. The committee recommends that the archivist direct OGIS to publish a best practice encouraging agencies to avoid the removal of documents already posted on agency websites that are not currently compliant with Section 508 of the Rehabilitation Act as amended and then alongside. Are we striking the word as after publish? Is it publish as a best practice or publish a best practice? If it's encouraging, I think it would be a best practice. Okay, I'm fine with that. All right, everyone good with that? Seeing lots of nods. Uh, Ginger, are you good with that? Yes, I am good with that. All right, anyone else on the phone? James? Yes, that's fine with me. Okay. All right, uh, next sentence. So we have a change uh, from, uh, well, the sentence would, uh, as change would read, instead, best practice would be to remediate such documents. Nice and simple sentence. I couldn't hear whether you said A in there. We had inserted A. Best practice. Yeah, I 
or the. Or the. 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 I, the my preference is the. Since the. We've already the. Fine. Instead, the best practice would be to remediate such documents. Everyone okay with that? Folks on the phone, okay with that? I think that's a good change. Okay. Yeah, as long as the second, does this change goes through as well, that would be. All right, let me know, like, cue me when she's, because I can't, can it? Oh. Are you done? Yes. Okay, next sentence. Um, so we're striking the beginning of the next sentence. So it's going to start with, when the agency is concerned about the practicality of remediation, the best practice would be to conduct an undue burden analysis. Should it say when an agency is concerned? Yes. Mm -hmm. Good point. Is everyone okay with that change? I'm seeing nods. Is that a yes? Yes? Yes. Folks on the phone, are you are you guys good with that change? Yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. great. Yeah. Yay, we made it through the bullet. All right, uh, next bullet, improving FOIA searches. The first sentence is going to read, the committee recommends that the archivist address the lack of public information about FOIA programs, search methods, and technologies. Programs apostrophe? Is that an apostrophe? Mm -hmm. uh, if it's about multiple. Multiple. Oh. Yeah, it's right. it's multiple programs, but it's there. Okay. How do well, folks feel about that? Right. This, Ray, Ray, no, this is your edit. I might. I'm a little bit worried that part. The general thrust was not necessarily that FOIA. Maybe I can go either. Maybe I can be swayed, but. Part of the problem was that search technology needs to go beyond FOIA programs. So maybe if someone has an email system that can't be searched, it doesn't mean that it's the FOIA program's fault. Is that's my concern. That's a good point. So you don't want to limit it to FOIA programs. Right. Anywhere within the agency. Right. Anyone who's at, being yeah, asked to conduct a search. I would see agencies would, would be better, maybe. Right now. What do you think? Yeah, can you live with agency. a more general yeah. <laughs> Iteration of that. So, so can we so can we go back to current agencies, whatever was struck? Can we go back to that struck language? Yes, we're good. All right, everyone's good with that. Everyone on the phone. Yeah. This is so much easier. Right? The the way it reads now for the people on the phone is the kid, the committee recommends the archivist address the lack of public information about current methods and technologies agencies use. Um, to search for responsive records by colon, and we haven't gotten to the rest yet. Right. Yeah, and I could tweak what Rennell suggested as well if needed, but that's okay with me. Rennell, you're okay with us? That's fine. Okay, thank you. Uh, next uh, sentence in that paragraph that's been affected is um, a little further down um, under number two. We're talking about the CFO, the Chief Way Officers Council work with the CIO, the Chief Information Officers Council, uh, to explore the technological issues related to searches and to promote best practices. We're striking and gain better understanding of and the word surrounding. Yeah, so it. <laughs> Yay, <right now. laughs> How do you guys feel about that? I think it's good. Everyone likes it. Everyone on the phone, folks, are you okay with that? Okay. Uh, next uh, sentence we have um, picks up in the middle after the federal acquisition regulation to ensure that all agencies consider FOIA obligations when acquiring electronic records management software. just moving the word around. Yeah, that's a Tom edit. Yeah. Everyone is good with that? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Everyone on the phone, good with that? Changing consider to incorporate. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sorry, Logan, say that again. Change. Consider, yeah. incorporate. I'm okay with that. What do you incorporate guys Incorporate FOIA obligations. obligations. Like, 
beyond consider, something beyond consider. You want something stronger right. yeah. than consider. Uh, I considered it, but it's too costly, so we're not going to incorporate it in this proposal. Yeah. Right. Address. Address? Address. I like, address is good. Yeah. How do you guys feel about address? So the folks on the phone, Logan is suggesting the word consider be modified, changed to address. So it's a little stronger. So it would say address FOIA obligations when acquiring electronic records management software. Everyone okay? Right. David. I understand the problem with consider. Work for me, huh? I understand the problem with consider, but it seems to me incorporate is the wrong word. Incorporate into what? No, we took it out. So we're now going with address. Oh. <laughs> I missed that. <laughs> it did sound like James might have a comment. Yeah, I'm sorry. Someone on the phone? Tell people to consider privacy considerations. They know what that Definitely. means without having to tell them to address. Uh, I think that the government is very sensitive to the word consider and that would cause them to take appropriate action. Compromise? We could have both words. Consider and address. <laughs> okay. All right. I can work with that. What do you guys think that about sounds that? Sounds a little wordy. <laughs> but this way we're making everyone happy. The outrageous. I like consider. <laughs> you like consider? Logan, happy are you dying well. on this hill? <laughs> no. Okay. okay, so we're going back to consider. This is one big mediation. I know. <laughs> Okay, um, and the very last line of that uh, bullet uh, point, we're changing from, we're striking the word in, changing it to four federal employees, and we're striking appraisal records and work plans. So let me just read the last phrase of that. It would read that the archivist also direct the OJAS, OJAS, to examine and report on the use of appropriate FOIA performance standards for federal employees, period. That's what she said. That's what she said. Sounds good. All right, everyone good with that? Folks on the phone? Yes. Uh, okay, I'm not hearing yes. any objections, so we're going to move yes. on. Oh, am I hearing an objection? Yes. I think they were saying yes. Oh, that was a yes. Yay. Okay. Uh, so the next paragraph, we're going to go, lots of changes here. Uh, this is Rain Now's changes. Would you like to talk about Making your, melodies. I'm sorry? Making melodies. Oh, you, there's one still for me. <laughs> this, we, we didn't do this one yet. Oh. The last bullet. I'm sorry. I That's skipped right. right over the last bullet. Yeah. I apologize. Thank you. Making efficient yeah. use of agency Just resources. So the sentence uh, as amended would read, the committee identified and recommends that the archivist direct OGIS to publish as best practices. A number of strategies to ensure agencies maximize the use of available resources. Yeah, we can't strike resources. Oh, I think that was that was a, a mistake when I, I was carrying that. over. Um, yeah, I don't. Yeah. My edit was just the, my edit was just yes. the beginning, like the other ones, just to make it consistent. Yeah, everyone okay with that change? Oh, not all in capital. Folks on the phone, everyone okay with that change? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Now back to Reno. Do you want to talk oh, through for a minute? A I just. Here too. She just changed it to to maximize the use of available resources. I think you have to move the identifier. Instead of um, maximize the use of the resources that they have available, so it's just a much cleaner way, I think, to say. Amy, I'm sorry. Do we still have a comment on the last bullet? So do we need to go back? Uh, on making use efficient use of agency resources. Yes. Uh, the the. Do you have a problem with this, Nate? The uh, Logan pointed out that the the committee identified and recommends is kind of not parallel. Strange. It's not parallel, right? The the place to put identified is before a number of strategies. The, the committee recommends that the archivist direct OGIS to publish as best practices a number of identified, identified strategies. strategies. Yeah, that's good. Committee recommends the archivist direct OGIS to publish as best practices a number of yeah. identified strategies. Mm -hmm. That's good. Great. Thank you, David. Is that good with everyone? Okay, so are we good with that bullet? Going once, going twice. Folks on the phone, do you want me to read the bullet again, or is everyone good with those changes? I'm good. 
Good. Okay. Now we're on to the next paragraph. This is Dr. Reyna. It was just to make it concise, so okay. it, it so shouldn't be substantive at all. Uh, I'm okay with that, but I actually would prefer the last line, increasing proactive disclosures and promoting transparency. So to I would, stay in. But I won't die on the hill, but I would prefer that that stay in. Mm -hmm. I would as well. So I have two votes of, in favor of not striking it. Right. Okay. Other folks? Neutral? I favor leaving that in, but it seems to me that thoughtfully is rather a peculiar word to put in this. Do we really want to say that we thought about this? Yeah, or, and also, I was going to say, you, what, what, I think you said well, I, I would also, I would prefer just to have endorses even as um, stronger than we could, we could draft something and not pass it. Yep. So. Do we have a problem with the pr prior language? The no. committee strongly endorses these recommendations. I actually would prefer that. Strongly endorses. How do you guys feel about that? I would prefer it, or if we wanted to only say endorses, that's okay, but strongly endorses is fine with me. Strongly endorses. I'm seeing a lot of nods, folks on the phone. We're going back to the original language. The committee strongly, strongly fine, endorses. But Sorry? That is fine too. I'm sorry, who was that on the phone? Hi, uh, James Hirschberg. Yeah, James, I'm sorry, go ahead. Is that me? No, I don't think it's you. So James, you were, you were saying that you also would like strongly endorses, if I heard you correctly, is that correct? Right. The, the language currently is the committee strongly endorses these recommendations and best practices and is confident that agencies implementing them will see measurable improvements to the administration of FOIA. Uh, and then it would have to be increased proactive disclosures and promote transparency. Or is it increasing proactive disclosures and promoting transparency? Either work. I'm going to leave it the way it was. Okay. Is Folks on the right phone, if you could mute your phones, I can hear room sound. Thank you. Guys on the phone, have you heard, did you hear that formulation? Do you want me to read it again? Okay. Um, everyone good with this? The way it, it reads now? Great. All right, we're done. Background. <laughs> It gets, it gets easier, I think, now. <laughs> point on. <laughs> Those were the worst pages, yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're on to page five, background. Uh, I believe we have one change on the first paragraph, from this to the. Everyone, I think, could agree no, to that. No, no. There's a lot of uh, <laughs> no uproar over that change. So that's good. Okay, in the second paragraph, we have, in the middle of the paragraph, we have a change, uh, or we have an addition, rather, administration that same. It's the same issue, right? So we're going to strike that. And Tom had suggested archivist. Announce, right. I've got that. So we're going to say the archivist, archivist announced, announced the, appointment. the appointment of, right, Tom? Yep. Okay, and the last sentence, the committee. get rid of the second archivist. I'm there. sorry. Oh, the archivist yeah. announced the appointment. Yes, thank you. Yeah, you are. Fixing it up. Yeah, on the I, board. Just, yeah. I just decided to save my nap. Yeah, 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 we can. <laughs> can't save. Okay, okay, thank you, Sean. We're good, we're good. Okay, uh, last uh, line, uh, the last sentence the committee may recommend legislative action, policy changes, or executive action, among other matters. I think it's just a comma that Tom it's added. Just a, um, that's all. Okay. Is everyone good with Tom's comma added? <laughs> Okay, I think we have consensus. All right, next page on page six, we have um, a big addition. Under recommendation, section suggested by Tom. Do you want to talk about that? <clears throat> yeah, the, uh, the executive summary makes clear that we've got two, we're doing two separate things. We're, you know, we've got specific actions and recommendations. The recommendations going through OGIS uh, 
from the archivist, and I just, I didn't, I think the way it was originally written, it looked as if the uh, specific, the best practices were sort of secondary and less important, rather than simply in a different category. And I, this sort of says what we're doing and how we're doing it. We've got recommendations and best practices. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of nods. I think that's fine, but we changed some of that language. Yeah, so yeah, we just need to go back. To conform it. Yeah. To conform. Yeah. Right. For, for exactly the same reason, I would like to see uh, a either larger print or a different type style for the two subheadings, specific actions on this page and best practices a couple of pages later. Okay. All right, do you want us, to, should we spend time now trying to make sure we're in conformance or is that something you guys can rely on us to do? I just went and grabbed the language from Oh, good, the, thank you. Maybe someone could read it out loud. Great, I, so uh, it you, currently Amy. says, the committee identified and unanimously, with a footnote, approved seven recommendations for the archivist for actions to improve the implementation of FOIA, addressing search technology, FOIA and accessibility, and FOIA performance standards. The committee also runs, recommends that the archivist consider a number of best practices that can assist agencies in bolstering both their openness and efficiency of their FOIA programs. Specifically, the committee has recommended that the archivist direct the Office of Government Information Services, OGIS. I am going to take out. Office Should that say the committee Services? recommends? Because oh. we've been keeping it in the present, right? The committee recommends? Yeah. Does everyone agree with that? Sure. Recommends that the archivist direct OGIS to publish and promote these best practices as part of its statutory responsibility to review FOIA policies and procedures and identify procedures and methods to improve compliance. We need to change the first line there. The committee also recommends. All right. We can leave also. We just need it instead of recommended. Oh, right. Also recommend. It should be recommends. Yes. Present tense. And you still need an S on the recommend. Second plan. recommend. Yeah. Can and then recommend. we'll need to change it back in the original location. Yeah, back in the front page. There. Okay, with those changes, uh, On everyone... the top line, oh. can we change the word for, uh, of the first paragraph? Seven recommendations to the archivist? Instead of for the archivist? Yes. Two? Everyone okay with two? Okay. All right. Um, does anyone, uh, everyone okay with that? Tom, this is a good addition. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to ask. Now I'll go back and change it up there. <laughs> I was just waiting for consensus over here and over here. Folks on the phone, do you want us to read it out loud again, or are you following? I'm following. I'm following. Okay. All right. Is everyone on the phone good with the changes that are uh, just discussed? Not hearing any objections, I'm going to move on. Uh, so specific actions, we will duly note that it will be shown in a different font of our choice. Um, the committee. Um, so again, these are changes. Is this another Tom? Oh, this is a Raynell. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm not picking on anyone in particular. I'm just trying to follow along. It's a couple people. Um, okay, then. It was just to make it concise. That's sure. All. Nothing substantive. Sorry. So we're striking FOIA advisory. We're starting with the committee recommends that the archivist take the following actions to improve agency processing of FOIA requests. Period. Everyone okay with that? Very and then, strong. And then on the second sentence, um, a number of people had suggested edits, uh, but they were all of the edits were addressed by adding in Tom section, um, Tom section above. So I just, I just made the executive decision to cut yeah. that sentence in its entirety. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, James Valvo, just want to make sure you've been heard on this because I think you you were part of these edits. Yep, I'm good. Thank okay. you. Great. <laughs> right. I mean, if the, the 
program is not really that process that way in request. Right. Maybe so, just say take the following actions. To improve agency administration. Administration of FOIA, of FOIA requests. Do we need it? I mean, can I we just say, say actions? Just yeah. actions, colon. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> Less words is always better. Yeah. yeah. It's fine. And strike to improve agency processing. Yeah, just yeah. We've, we've had yeah. so much yeah, yeah, yeah. set up. I know we have had a lot, of, lot of set up for this. Is everyone good with that? Striking mm -hmm. to improve agency processing. Okay. Okay. Uh, we're moving on to search technology. At the bottom of page six, we have a comment. Um, anyone want to own up to that comment? Oh, this is me. This is Melanie. <laughs> so I added in these sentences um, describing the information that has been collected in chief FOIA officer reports on searches and use of technology to improve searches as a predicate to um, the recommendation. Uh, <coughs> Melanie, I'm just curious, are, are, are those comprehensive and official, uh, and official descriptions? Yeah. There, then there, the committee missed that? I mean, the subcommittee no, missed that? No, we talked about it. I, we talked about it. There's a little discrepancy of we had a hard time finding it. It made so every agency does the chief FOIA officer's report, and some of them may have it kind of in an ad hoc way, say what they've done to put in search. But when we searched, um, it was hard to find and not uniform throughout agencies, I, I guess I would say. It was in, res I mean, there is a distinct section of the Chief FOIA Officer Report where we were asking, we've asked agencies over and over, um, you know, the past six years to describe use of technology to improve FOIA administration. And so um, I was looking at this again this morning, you know, over and over again, agencies are saying, well, we're using e-discovery platforms, we've got a new system for deduplicating, that kind of thing. So there is a lot of information about searches I think it's just not as comprehensive as we were looking for. So, I mean, I and think we could put back. Sure. And, yeah, I'm willing to finesse it. And, but just the, there's a difference between using FOIA technology and what are you doing to search? How, do you, right. how does the yeah. search conduct it? So, so the sentence still actually could be there, uh, there nonetheless appears to be no comprehensive or uniform description of how agencies conduct FOIA searches. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Comprehensive or for uniform? The sentence, okay, so, so he's proposing that for the, the sentence that I was striking out, put it back in. Right, you leave your description in, in but add add back in. And, and, and say, okay, so tell me what that would be then? Yeah. <clears throat> well, I, off the top of my head, it was, right. there nonetheless <laughs> appears to, appear to be no comprehensive or uniform descriptions of how agencies conduct FOIA searches. Okay, okay. That's fair. Yeah, that's okay. I, I just have one. I think that gets it. That's what? Yeah. yeah. Is that good? That's fine. I just have one question, Melanie. Yeah. Just think about this. Right. Do chief FOIA officer reports mm -hmm. themselves collect information? I just wonder if we have to fix that formulation. Oh. Um, you can say the Department of Justice has collected yeah. chief FOIA. In chief, yeah. To say. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. Okay. Um, folks on the phone, do you want us to read the sentence to you again? I would. Thank you. Amy, do you want to read that or do you want me to read yes. it? Yes. Okay. So um, it currently reads, comment, for the past six years from 2012 through 2017, the Department of Justice has collected through Chief FOIA Officer Reports information related to agency okay. use of technology to facilitate processing of requests, including improved searches. Department of Justice summaries um, and assessments of these reports highlight examples of such efforts, such as agency use of e-discovery tools and platforms to facilitate email searches. Nonetheless, there appear to be no comprehensive or uniform descriptions of how agencies conduct FOIA searches. Yeah, it's fine. Is that good with everyone? I'm seeing shaking of heads. Yeah. Folks on the phone, is that good? Okay. Seeing how this hangs together because we're seeing only part of it. Oh, okay. is there a way to? Oh. Um, I would have to make it yeah, super where, tiny. Where, where does the sentence beginning nonetheless? The second. Right here on the second page. Do 
you want me to read it to you one more time, David? Please give, just give me a moment to read it. Sure. Okay. I'm okay on that, though I have a question about the footnote. Okay. Uh, the footnote that says Office of Information Policy conducted. Um, is there a typo in the, um, in, in the cited uh, item? Is it when leveraging digital tools, or is it leveraging tool? Oh, I'm sure it's just, it's just a typo. It needs to be an S. Yes, yeah, tools. Okay, is everyone good with the footnote? I guess that's footnote one. Very exciting. Actually, we added a footnote earlier. So oh, it's yeah. actually footnote so two. So it'll change to two. Yeah. Okay, in the next sentence, uh, sorry, two sentences down, requiring chief way officers to include additional information in their chief way officer reports could enhance the ability of the government and the public to identify efficient search methods, et cetera, et cetera. Everyone okay with that change? Instead of could. I saw you two looking at each other. <laughs> well, maybe we could say would, but take out greatly. Yeah. Would, so it would read, would enhance the ability? Okay. Could, All right. That's a good compromise. Okay, that's good. Unless you want it greatly, keep it good. Is that, is that good with everyone? I do okay. have one. I mean, yes. I, I don't know if we need it, but we we struck uh, we struck this information, uh, talking referencing back to to the information on search, and so now it's just requiring FOIA officers to include information. I think. Do we want to either say this, this or no, it, some well, reference? Well, it's, it's supposed to say additional information. Yes. I had added in yeah. additional there, to there is because additional it's there. we already have some. But maybe it's, I don't know what is looking. What's up there now? It is okay. additional is up there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But Sean, you're suggesting that the word "this" is important in front of additional because, well, because it references, well, references it what's above. The oh, you want this yeah. and additional. Uh, or or such uh, additional information. We could actually put in search procedures or something like that. Additional information on, and then say what additional information we want, or reference back to this. Just keep, this. just keep the word this. this? Just keep this the word this in. I think that, that would fix okay. it. Is that okay with everyone? Okay. Uh, next uh, paragraph we have, starting with paragraph three, uh, suggesting a modification to the FARS. <laughs> we have a change that um, three lines down that would read to consider, instead of to take into consideration, features that will help facilitate the agency's responsibilities under FOIA to provide access to federal agency records. Folks are okay with that? Just like sort of grammatical thing. Yeah, no. right now, thank you. <laughs> okay, um, comment. We have a the on the second line. Everyone okay with that? <laughs> Okay, moving on. FOIA and accessibility, subparagraph. I am moving on to top of page eight. In the comment section, second line, we have word customers is struck and replaced by other individuals. Everyone all right with that change? Nods, yes, good. Yes. Yep. Um, I'm also looking at the fourth line of that same paragraph. We are striking the words in order. So the phrase would read, and other features that made the documents accessible to ensure that sensitive information cannot be obtained by reverse engineering. Everyone okay with that? Folks on the phone, so far so good? Yep. Okay, great. Um, paragraph three, encourage OGIS to highlight the issues. Uh, in the comment paragraph, we have a change. We have all citizens are struck and replaced by everyone. That seems pretty comprehensive. Uh, and we have a suggested striking of a sentence that starts with agencies should keep in mind they have flexibility to proactively disclose records while seeking to maximize accessibility. That's All right. my suggested deletion because I think it's legal advice on 
Section 508, so it's problematic to me because it's legal advice and it's also on Section 508. Mm -hmm. um, then could we regurgitate the line that we used before about pointing to um, 508's, um, let me say the correct words, um, the undue burden analysis in 508? Could we point to that? Are you on the? Are you on pick, top of page four? Yeah, Nate? point three. See, our yeah. pages are different. Oh, well, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, so it's the comp. This was what I wanted to take out. Right. No, 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 no. But oh, he, he go back where he I'm going back email. to where he wants to uh, insert. Oh, well, I mean, instead, I I understand that agencies should keep right. in mind that they have flexibility right. to practically disclose records. And if we don't want to give legal advice, can we point to what the Rehabilitation Act says about their flexibility? So something along the lines of agencies um, should inform themselves about the undue burden standard. Oh, you're on the undue burden analysis. Well, uh, am I in the right place? Am I? Yeah. He's okay. just trying to come up with a yeah, yeah, yeah. substitute sentence. Um, um, agencies should keep in mind um, the five way compliances. Uh, How about agencies should balance their Section 508? See, like it's very legal advice right, when right. you're phrasing it that way. A, a prior draft of this that the working group for this report had at one time had that kind of language here. And the OGIS staff, well, I wrote it. <laughs> the, uh, the OGIS staff uh, contacted me and urged that that all be moved to the best practices area. And that's why it's there now. Um, and I, I leave it to the OGIS staff to, to, to explain why they wanted to do that. But that's why it was taken from here. It seems to me like if you wanted to add a sentence in here, it, the phrasing would have to be something like, the Rehabilitation mm -hmm. Act provides, yes. uh, you know, and then quote it. Maybe and that would address Nate's concern. Yep. Um, and then the, that it also addresses my concern because we're not giving legal advice through this. We're just stating what we're the just rehab stating access. a standard in the statute. Nate, would that be okay? Yes. So it would just say something like we just would have to quote it. Right. The Rehabilitation Act provides quote something something. The agencies to yes. Good. That's fine with me. And I'm thinking that we would quote the undue burden standard. Would be yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is that all right with everyone? Okay. Um, yeah, then that will have to be its own sentence, and then I think then period, and then your Congress should ensure it will be, be a new sentence. sentence. Right. right. Yeah. All right. Can, can, be, before we leave this, I'm not quite sure what's going to be said about undue burden without, without seeing what the statutory language looks like. I don't know whether you can just directly quote it and have it yep. fit here. I think, I think it's going to say something to the effect that agencies, that, that the, the Rehabilitation Act allows The last agencies. sentence of the first bullet point. On page four. The last sentence of the first bullet point. Right, on yeah. Page four. To conduct an undue burden the analysis. We're all, we're all agreed on that language already, so let's yeah, just use it again. We could just use that. Yeah. That's strong. Would that be all right, Nate? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because that. Oh, the fine. last phrase of the last, last phrase. Bullet. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. Do you still, but do you still want Nate to conduct an undue burden analysis part in there too, or um, would you be okay well, with the Rehab Act allows agencies to release electronic documents that are not Section 508 compliant if rendering them yep. compliant would impose an undue burden on the agency? Yes. Just that last part. Yep. Okay. Everyone okay with that? Okay. Under 
Or can you read it out as it will be? Yes. So it will read, the committee supports the goal of improving information access for everyone. However, too often agencies do not have the resources to remediate records released proactively or in response to FOIA requests, thus potentially preventing them from being able to post these records in their FOIA reading rooms. The Rehabilitation Act allows agencies to release electronic documents that are not Section 508 compliant if rendering them compliant would impose an undue burden on the agency. Congress should ensure that agencies have sufficient resources to meet both accessibility and proactive disclosure requirements. Yep. All right, good. Even better. <coughs> Whoever suggested uh, using that language in bullet four, thank you. I mean, in bullet on page four. Who was that? James. Was that James? Thank yep. you, James. Okay, moving on. Uh, FOIA performance standards. In the comment section, we have in the first uh, sentence, the U.S. Department of Justice states that FOIA is everyone's responsibility. That's a link, not an edit. Yeah, oh, that's just a link. <laughs> oh, <laughs> mine is blue. I was going to say, is there, yeah, is there a problem with that? <laughs> but I'm okay with that link. Okay, we're okay with that yeah. link? Okay, good. <laughs> the next one is also a link. No, is and she, then it's just the... The, adding the word the. the. No, 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 but yeah, the memorandum. Yes, yeah, you're right. <laughs> the, the problem with links like this is that people who have a paper copy Can't tell. Won't, won't see this information. But that's always Can, a problem. I mean, yeah. we're going to be posting this yeah. on. Well, we've, we've got footnotes elsewhere with citations. So you would also like a footnote citation? Well, but after this, the, we're not going to have line edits. Like, it'll be a final document with links which are helpful. You won't be looking at line edits. Anymore. He wants a footnote citing. Well, some people are going to see this on paper. On the oh, I see. I see. We could do that. And everyone, I see everyone okay with that? So wherever yeah. there's a link, there yeah. a we'll put a footnote. Just noting that there, that there. So, um, like an actual citation. C. Sure. Justice.gov, backslash OIP, wherever it is. Yeah, I would just add to the obvious thing that makes it they're all, they all follow the same standard. Yes. We will do that. Okay. So we have uh, in the second line, in the second se uh, paragraph, rather, in an attempt to address these problems, DOJ issued a memorandum. We'll drop a footnote instructing the heads. I think everyone would be okay with the. Next sentence, the committee believes that instead of the. Everyone all right with that? Mm -hmm. yep. Okay, uh, moving on to best practices. Uh, OGIS has a responsibility to review FOIA policies and procedures and identify procedures and methods? Yeah, that's the statute. Even though it sounds repetitive, sounds that's so the weird. statute. Then I guess we have to go with that. Um, everyone all right with that? Okay, is there an additional footnote five? Oh, yeah, that's me. So that's, yeah, sorry. Um, that's my big footnote. That just uh, putting in uh, references to all the DOJ guidance on so many of these different topics that are being addressed. Okay, everyone okay with that? I'm, I'm okay with the, uh, this is Sean. I'm okay with the footnote. I just think it's, uh, it's a little odd that it's, a, it's an OIP and justice footnote content, uh, and the sentence is all about uh, OGIS and the archivist. So I don't know if we want to actually add in a quick sentence. Or the other the other place to put it was just of trying to find a good place to right. put it. Mm -hmm. Another place maybe is right after the word best practices, the and little the header. heading. That's where it could go so that it it is completely separate. Sure. Like right up here at the right right where we say best practices as a heading put the footnote there. Then it's not so jarring. This yeah, OGIS about putting in OGIS there is that it looks like we're recommending that whole list of things, and I and we're not doing that. Hmm. Doesn't OGIS well, identify best practices in its uh, uh, agency uh, assessments? Yes. So we do. maybe we should put a list of those in. Of I mean, this reads a little bit like an advertisement for OIP. It's not an advertisement. It's. It, it doesn't make sense for a document co containing all these recommendations on uh, best practices for FOIA to be completely silent as to existing DOJ guidance on these exact topics. It's as if the, the world does not exist, that the, the, you know, 
you can't pretend that there's not guidance that supports the work of the committee, that there's guidance on so many of these topics. I have no problem moving it, the footnote to somewhere above, like I said, under best practices. It's hardly. So in practice, um, most, most agencies already rely on this uh, OIP guidance. And so I think, um, to Melanie's point, um, we probably should leave it in, maybe not here, but somewhere, because they're already relying on this. And we don't want to make it seem like we just uh, kind of are coming up with something new. Um, because most FOIA offices will tell you we already do this. And this is why. So I, I would have to agree that if the purpose of the recommendations the committee is making is to come up with new best practices, then we can't possibly list all the existing best practices and references that are already in existence. Um, our recommendation here goes to OGIS. Right. Certainly OGIS is aware of the guidance that DOJ already has out there. Yeah, this is James, and I second that. Uh, I, I don't know what's in all of these best practices, and so I don't know that I want to say that we're recommending that agencies do this. If, if we need to have it in there, maybe a sentence that says, OIT maintains a list of best right. practices. Right. No, it's Link. not. Here they are. But th these, aren't, these aren't what the committee is recommending. This is no. what OIP is recommending. No, it's, it's ne neither of that. Excuse me, I don't mean to, to sound harsh, but it's none of that. OIP has responsibility under the statute to issue guidance to agencies. These are links to guidance that's applicable government-wide that address a whole range of issues that are exactly parallel to the best practices identified in the advisory committee report. So this supports the work of the advisory committee that there are already these existing guidance articles. You, the, and committee I would isn't, the committee that isn't recommending them. They're already existing guidance. That information to agencies and exclude the information from this particular report. I'm sorry, can you start that sentence again, please? Because we missed the beginning. Sure. Um, so I would recommend that OGIS. Um, if they want to refer to existing best practices that DOJ has recommended, that they do so um, separately and that this report not include that information. But you keep, you, I'm sorry, but you keep misstating what this is. This is not recommended best practices from DOJ. These are a list of guidance, government-wide policy guidance issued by DOJ that is currently in effect across the government. Uh, can we do this? This is Stephanie. Can we say under best practices something like, while, DO, while the Department of Justice um, publishes best practices, <laughs> whatever we, we want to say, but then we say OGIS has the responsibility to review what's out there and to come up with so, additional. If, for some reason, people keep misunderstanding these are guidance articles. Is I, there a place to put them maybe in a different place? And I'm just wondering, maybe in, a, in an appendix? Would you be open to that? No, I, I don't. I mean, they're. I think they, folks it's are a having good, a connection problem. Well, I, I guess I'm having a connection problem because the FOIA professionals who are work with the, with this law are fully aware and follow DOJ guidance. All the, the agency reps are nodding their heads here. So there's, it's, it's not like it's some weird esoteric point to go at the end of this report. And because the best practices all deal with these topics, it's a relevant reference point. I have a recommendation. Uh, so okay. I think if uh, right after the first sentence where we have OGIS has a responsibility to review FOIA practices and procedures, Etc. If we add in essentially a, a sentence that is the combine basically the first two sentences of the of the footnote and put it in there and say something like the Department of Justice through the Office of Information Policy, um, and I would say issues then jumping to the second line of the footnote issues guidance to agencies. Um, 
or government-wide on a range of topics related to best practices discussed, or best practices, period, and then a footnote that includes essentially that list and, and the rest of the information. Well, I thought I was going to say exactly <laughs> what Sean just said, but I would have stopped before talking about a footnote with this whole list. It seems to me that what he has suggested is appropriate. I'd, I'd make that the footnote, add to it available at, with, with a, a link, with a citation of where all this stuff is. But the rest of this, it seems to me, goes far beyond the scope of what we're supposed to be doing here, uh, and especially because, as Melanie has just said, FOIA professionals are already aware of all of this and are guided by it. So that, oh. that says to me that that's not part of our recommendations for ways to improve the practice. It so, makes no sense to take away detail that is supportive of the things that are, are suggested in the report. I'm just, I, I, well, I'm well, well, by I that. Think there, I have two issues um, that maybe we can work out. One, I think that if we do this, we should probably allow OGIS opportunity to, ish, to have a parallel footnote saying that their stuff that goes um, above and beyond what we've talked about. Uh, I realize that they might ha it might not be technically guidance, but certainly OGIS has background material that I'm, maybe they would want to add in a footnote as well. Um, and two, I do want to issue James' point that I maybe the government knows the guidance is gospel, but I haven't reviewed all of these, and I know that there has been DOJ guidance previously that I haven't, that I wouldn't feel confident endorsing. So having not read through all of these to make sure that everything, mm. every sentence in all of these goes largely dovetails with what we're recommend, recommending is tricky, um, especially, You're at not, this, but especially at this late date. The committee is not, this guidance is issued, it's Department of Justice guidance, so this isn't up for people to vote on. The committee isn't voting on whether they like the guidance. This is it, to include factually the existence of the guidance and not act as though the FOIA world is, exists without this guidance. Well, if, if the objective here is, is to note the existence of the guidance, that was really the point that Sean was making and that I was making. Let's, in one sentence, uh, note the existence of this guidance with the citation for where to find it. And by the way, I am not going to suggest that we also have a footnote for ACUS recommendations <laughs> on, on FOIA. <laughs> All right, how does everyone feel about the Sean slash David proposal? I, mean, I would so say maybe if, 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 I would also just say one more time and then I'll leave it that I like that idea, but then also say OGIS, uh, OGIS give OGIS the opportunity to give their background information as well. Understanding that is different than guidance. Well, why don't we, I mean, it doesn't really make sense in the flow of that paragraph to have it as a sentence. If we make it to a, the first sentence, if you make it a footnote, in addition, the Justice Department through OIP issues guidance, I mean, that makes, if you turn that into a footnote to that first sentence, it makes more sense. Because the second sentence, or what's now the third sentence, goes back to OGIS. So mm -hmm. you just have this random OIP sentence in the middle. So you, you're more in favor of a footnote? As a footnote, but you know, keep what Sean was saying. So just have the footnote say whatever is now that sentence. So the footnote would start with, in addition. In addition. DOJ through OIP has statutory responsibility. Also has statutory, or also. has statutory authority. And then it just makes, yeah. And has issued guidance found that. Yeah. I would suggest on the first line of this footnote to change has statutory authority to under its statutory authority. So I think what I'm hearing. In, in the footnote. That, yeah. Yeah, so that first sentence is going to have two, under, two I, footnotes. I want to replace has with under footnote. its. Yeah, the, the first one, no, we can move the site. Yeah. Um, or just over. So now we're, we're moving the site to back after? After compliance. Okay. 
after right. would, before or after the OJ statutory. Fine. I would move that that citation, which is five uh, USC, citation to the law, to, to to OGIS has the responsibility, uh, and then it's a citation of where that responsibility comes from. I'm fine with that. Right. So, move responsibility to here, because yep. then that accomplishes us putting footnote five right. at the end of that first sentence, as Oops. per Michael's right. comment. No, which is where that. that's where it was. Oh no, I guess I had it at the very yeah, end. At the yeah, very it's end. fine at the end of the He's first. He's trying sentence. to suggest a flow. Yeah, that's fine. And then the substance of the footnote would read. In addition, DOJ through OIP um, under its statutory, I heard authority, but is oh, everyone okay with the responsibility? To encourage compliance with the FOIA. You guys help me out. What was the rest of the sentence that you wanted to fix? Yeah, I think like my, I don't know what, what. In addition, like, yeah, I would say we, we can go with, in addition, the Department of Justice through the Office of Information Policy has statutory responsibility to encourage compliance with the FOIA and issues, uh, and then I would jump down to government-wide guidance on a range of topics related to best practices, period. Uh, this material is available on OIP's website is what it sounded like, we were, and then that's the very end. Uh, I mean, I, I don't agree with it because I think it's it's weak. It weakens it to not list them when they're so specific on the, exactly the thing, the topics. But um, I, it just doesn't make any sense to me to, to take it out. We have two guidances on the importance of co good communication with requesters that has items that exactly match the best practices listed in this report. And so, why would we not want to draw attention to that? I just See, to me, it's just, it makes no sense. Right, one other option to consider. Was recommended um, adequately address the fact that there is guidance out there relating to the best practices discussed in the report. I think the bad news may be. Might as well. I, I like the approach of saying that it's out there pointing people in the right direction. Um, but not doing what I feel would be a sort of an incorporation by reference uh, of these particular items, uh, because as Nate said, we, we haven't reviewed them sentence by sentence the way that we are for the rest of this. Well, as I, as I started to say, the bad news is that if the committee found it necessary to say the same thing some of the guidance says, then it's probable that the committee found that the agencies were not following the guidance. And so, listing no, all the or guidance. The, or that, as, as this discussion is revealing, the committee isn't aware of the guidance. It's well, just as, it's just as, it's just as, as, as interpret, it's just as susceptible to that interpretation. No, uh, they wouldn't have made the recommendations that they made if, if they thought the agencies were actually putting tracking numbers and notifying all the requesters and following that aspect of the law. Why would you recommend that again if the agencies were doing it all? Oops, because it was a OIP recommendation in 2014. It wasn't a recommendation. I'm it's sorry, guidance. guidance. Well, people have just been saying that they weren't aware of all the guidance. The agency it supports people. The, it supports, let's just kind of get back to the, to the notion here that we've got agencies implementing the FOIA. They have, are, are guided by guidance issued by OIP. The committee is recommending a whole series of, of actions to improve FOIA. It's not as if this is a parallel universe. It's all the same people doing the same work. These are mutually supportive efforts. So I think I have a compromise solution that I'd like to offer. If we were to keep this more general uh, footnote, as we've talked about, mm -hmm. and just citing generally, what if we were to tie, and I know this is going to get uncomfortable for folks like Nate, but what if we were to <laughs> just drop footnotes to, I, I'm not picking on you, I'm just <laughs> noting it as a fact, um, every time that there is something parallel to each one of these policies, dropping a footnote, see also. Well, I mean, I so thought that why was... why is it more, so it's directly correlated? I don't know. I mean, I, I would have been way more amenable to that, like, a long time ago rather than this late in the game. 
I mean, I, I really feel I'm, I'm aware of the guidance. I read it all the time. But as James says, I wouldn't want to. Um, we haven't we haven't given it the same eagle eye that we're clearly giving this. So I would have a hard time doing that. Um, I'm willing to see what my colleagues think about it. But since I was singled out, that's my, that's my thinking. <laughs> I thought that it was easiest to have it just here as a, a, a construct, like the reports going to the archivist and to the world. Anybody reading it, here's guidance that's on these these various topics that relates to this. So I, so I thought actually just keeping it in a footnote uh, where I didn't even, in a footnote and just in one spot, I thought was kind of the smoothest way to do it. I, fair enough. Um, I, I actually think the best compromise is the one that we have now saying OIP has lots of guidance on this stuff, this very stuff. Here's the link without um, I mean, I've just looked at the website, and there's some other stuff on the website that may apply that's not in this list. So I, uh, personally, I would say the best compromise would say OIP has a wealth of guidance on this information. Here's where you find it. And, and won't OIP update their guidance? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So by telling people, look, you can go to the website, they can go and they can see new guidance. This is going to tell people they may not know there's new guidance. <laughs> they may not go to the website to look for it. That's so a very by, good way to argue it. <laughs> so by, by giving the website. Is appropriate to bring this to a close? Yeah, I'm wondering no. if that's what I we think should that's do. It. I think I, that's fine. That's fine. OK. I think, I think we have sort of come to a good All right, so we have a compromise. over here. <laughs> um, so I know we're a little past our breaking point. Um, should we just take one minute, though, before we wrap this up and reread footnote 5? Mm -hmm. Just to make sure we're all clear on the language. Can, can we see what it looks like now? And see what so, it looks like. I, I just want to make sure before I cut anything that so the agreement at this point is to say, in addition, the Department of Justice, through the Office of Information Policy, has statutory responsibility to encourage compliance with the FOIA, and it issues government-wide guidance on a range of topics related to the best practices discussed above. This material is available at, on OIP's website at, and then cut the rest of the footnote. We say the FOIA in other places. We're not citing OIP statute. I don't know that we should cite OGIS, the OGIS statute either. Earlier on page I'm okay. neutral on that. I abstain from that. Um, but David wants to make a comment. Yeah, well, w w once this settles, I have a couple of wording suggestions in this sentence. Uh, in a, what I propose is, in addition, the Department of Justice through the Office of Information Policy, and if we're going to say OIP, we need to put in OIP there, well, sure. comma, under its statutory responsibility to encourage compliance with FOIA, comma, no, issues, and then the rest of it as you have it. How does everyone, I prefer the formulation that Melanie suggested. How does everyone else feel? I think the way it is now is fine. I think the way it is is okay. Has statutory responsibility to encourage. I think that's fine. All right, everyone on the phone, are you guys clear about the way footnote five is now reading? Are you going to go through yes. and abbreviate? Yes. 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 That's yes. Fine. Michael, we're going to go through and abbreviate. I okay. promise. <laughs> so no, DOJ we've had. Right. I mean, we've yes, had several today. times. So it'll be DOJ throughout. Okay. And OIP. Yes. All right, let me um, just, I'm sorry, Tom, go ahead. I like the best practices discussed below instead of above. Mm -hmm. Yes, they are. good point. Thank you. All right, anything else on footnote five? I want to just take a 15-minute break, because I know we've been all working very hard. Reminder, the Charters Cafe is available, restrooms on this floor, <coughs> and next to the Charters Cafe, no food or drink back here, and 15 minutes. So it is now 11.45, let's return by noon. Thank you. We stand adjourned for 15 minutes. I thought we were going to be done by noon. <laughs> <laughs>
any other changes. Okay, I want to go ahead and get started again. I'm running a little behind schedule. I have a couple of committee members who need to get out of here a little bit on the earlier side. So I am very hopeful and optimistic we can roll right through the rest of these changes and take a final vote. Um, and I don't see the rest of the changes as being as substantive as the ones we've already covered. So um, <clears throat> everyone back on the phone? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, so let's just go on to our little chart. FOIA and accessibility. The I'm on. It's my page ten. Does that look good to everyone? I don't see any edits there. Agreed. Carry over to page eleven. I see a change in um, striking and the benefits uh, column. Uh, the first uh, paragraph provides the opportunity to focus a requester's request. So we're striking greatly narrow. Everyone okay with that? I see nods. Yes? yes? Okay, enterprise data inventories is a link. <laughs> All right, moving on to page 12. I see a change on recommendation side, promote collaboration among it's a good change, whoever made that suggestion. Tom, thank you. Everyone okay with that? Yes. Uh, on the right-hand side, benefits, engenders knowledge sharing. Just, a just hyphen. hyphen. Oh, just the hyphen. Okay. <laughs> I support. Thank you, Tom. Second. Okay. I did, uh, this is Sean, I had one uh, suggestion for the, the first bullet in the square below that where it mm -hmm. says, the benefit creates teams it's it's also the recommendation to create teams so I kind of feel like it's strange mm -hmm. to say the benefit okay. is that you're creating a team uh, so should my, we move it my suggestion was simply I, I like that it's talking about the familiarity and experience so uh, I was thinking uh, leverages experience and familiarity with requests of a certain type which is kind of the second half of the sentence uh, to more efficiently process requests so we, the sentence would start with leverages. Yes. Familiarity with uh, Experience and familiarity. Experience. And familiarity with and requests familiarity of a certain type. With, I'm sorry? With, with requests of a certain with type. That's kind of the With thing. requests of a certain type, period. Right. To more efficiently process requests. That looks good. Got it. Amy, you got that? Yes, ma'am. All right, everyone good with that? It's good. All right, I'm hearing nods. Everyone on the phone okay so far? Yes. Yes. Yep. Great. All right, uh, I don't see anything on my page 13. Everyone agree? All right. Okay. Uh, nope. Um, don't agree. So a, a similar kind of problem yep. is the, the second uh, a set of boxes under expanded use of tracks. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, so the, the recommendation is encouraged simultaneous processing of simple requests, and then the benefit is ensures both simple and process, simple and complex are, are, are being completed in a reasonable amount of time. I think if we, under the recommendation, the first box, if we, uh, if we get rid of, uh, if we stop that sentence at requests. Okay. Um, get rid of the so that. So that. Right, so that, uh, and then essentially turn the benefit into the so that I mean you know something along the lines of uh, ensures uh, that uh, processing requests in either category are not unduly uh, delayed. Requests in either category. I'd be inclined to leave that yeah. box and write the way it is. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, then that's fine. Yeah. yeah. So then the change we're talking about is just on the left hand side under recommendations. We put a period after requests. Encourage simultaneous processing of simple and complex requests, period. Sure. And stat benefits on the right side stays the same. Yes? Yes. Okay. All right, page fourteen. I don't see any changes there. Oh no, I'm sorry. Wrong. Bringing in talent. I see a change on the left box of recommendations. Consider creating rotational programs to expose inexperienced or entry-level employees 
as opposed to Young and Muir. Maybe Young and Muir was not so politically correct. <laughs> Who, whoever suggested this, thank you. That was Reno. <laughs> thank you, Reno. Is everyone good with that change? Okay. And before we move off 14, sure. this is Sean again. Uh, in the bullets, uh, in the boxes just above, this is a where for the recommendation is where appropriate centralized processing. The fourth bullet is increases collaboration across agencies, and I wasn't sure the recommendation was for interagency centralization of processing. So I thought maybe this would make more sense to say collaboration across offices. Yeah. Okay. Or components. Yeah. Or. Yeah. Agree. Is that good with everyone? We cross out agencies and say offices, increases yeah, that, collaboration. That was, that was the yeah, across offices, which results in expanded shared knowledge and processing techniques. Good with everyone? Good with everyone on the phone? Yes. Okay. All right, moving on to page 15 on uh, under interns, detailees, and contractors. We have a couple changes on the benefit side. We have a suggested strikeout of the first bullet. Uh, the su suggested language for the second bullet is starts with frees up time for more experienced personnel to focus on complex tasks by giving temporary staff work that requires limited training. So the first bullet is incorporated yeah. into the second, second bullet. Right. That makes sense. Everyone all right with that? Yep. Okay. Page 16. I don't see any changes on page 16. Page 17. Under tracking systems, we have in the benefits column, the second to last bullet from the bottom, we have a suggestion for striking, continues maintenance and access to technical support. The sentence would start, start with, addresses issues encountered by, in use, sorry, encountered in use by providing for continuous maintenance and access to technical support. You flipped the sentence. We're trying to make these parallel. There are a few yes. of these that are all the same. Most of them start with a ver increases, lays, impresses, simplifies. And then every once in a while, you'll find one that says, you know, starts with a, 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 a declarative statement. Yeah, and I tried to make them The parallel. working group got a little tired. Yeah. So, I mean. <laughs> Is that fair to say? Yes. So thank you for catching that. Everyone good with that change? Yep. Okay. All right, page 18. Uh, under proactive disclosures, disclosure, uh, benefits, uh, the second um, paragraph, we have several comments in the bullet section. The first bullet is edited to read, relieves pressure on the FOIA process by making a report, paren, or at least the title if the report must be withheld because of classification or privacy interests, and paren. That is already subject, the subject of many requests proactively available. That was exhausting. All right, whose change is that? Tom, that's you. Is this a parallel issue? It's, it's, yeah, it's not intended to change it. So, okay. and in fact, I sort of ran out, and I think my email, my cover email said, uh, et cetera, because on the <laughs> next page, you've got the same sort of thing. There is already the committee urges OMB already. And I didn't take the time to go through each one of those, but it's pretty easy to do. Yes. By simply starting allows for informed instead of there is already, et cetera. Yes. Yeah. So I would be more than happy to commit to uh, staff drafting the uh, parallelism on the remaining boxes. Okay, on Logan. On the recommendation, I would just add the word unclassified before testimony or unclassified testimony. Okay, I'm sorry. All unclassified reports. And all unclassified. Oh, and all unclassified. Uh, unclassified testimony submitted to Congress. Is everyone good with that change? Yes. Is the D in or out? Uh, it, it is suggest, suggested to strike. Disclose. Disclose all unclassified reports agencies provide to, to Congress. Congress. So it's out. It seems like it should be well, out. It's deleted. Uh, what I'm not so sure about here is whether we're talking about reports provided to Congress be proactively disclosed or whether it's that it should be disclosed in the present tense as yeah. it's actually happening. Oh. Good point. Don't, don't we want to uh, 
not address that issue because Congress may want a few hours to read the testimony. Well, that's before. why I think the D should be in. No, I think it's that really is where I'm going with this. I think it should be. He wants the D in. I want the D in. Yeah, well, I think I put the D in for that purpose. Oh, well, <laughs> I, I wasn't sure whether it was in or out. I think oh, it should be in. It looks like it was being struck, oh, but it should oh, be it's in. Struck. It should be. I think we'll, it, we'll in leave it fine. in. We'll I'm leave sorry. it in. That is a consensus. Folks on the phone, we're leaving in provided <laughs> D stands. And we've added unclassified. Before testimony. Yes, and we added the word unclassified before testimony. Okay, uh, page 20. I don't have anything on page 19, I'm sorry, to, other than the carryover right from Tom's comment. Uh, page, I do, I'm sorry, I'm trying to follow the pagination. Uh, let's see, page 20. I have the first uh, comment is that Office of Management and Budget. Excuse me, on 19. Yes, sir. It's R19. Uh, the, the box with, that mentions OMB on the left certainly isn't parallel to everything else in that column. It's uh, just a different pagination. I'm, I'm that's not the one you're about to talk yep, about. Yep, that's about, yeah. exactly. I'm, I'm talking about the, this one. The one yeah. Yes, I'm sorry. I'm bottom page. of page 19. Your oh, bottom of page 19. Oh, okay. I apologize. I printed out my version yeah. so I can read it. It's a little bigger print. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, just a, yes. A small thing. There, some, looks like the box lines are different too. Maybe, we will fix uh, that. Maybe that's just that, me. Yes, uh, as as the things get kicked over, sometimes it'll take off the top, and but I will ensure we that. We will fix it. Yeah. <clears throat> So I think the solution here on this uh, OMB, OMB issue is to uh, to solve also the the the, uh, the uniformity and the consistency and just say uh, pro start at the proactively proactively disclose statements of administrative mm -hmm. administration policy and enrolled bill memoranda. It's only going to be OMB, but our recommendation is whoever has it should post it. That is that, that does that work for everyone? Yep. Yeah. That works. Okay. So we're striking the Office of Management and Budget. Should. Yeah. Should. And we're going to start the sentence with proactively disclose statements of administration policy and enrolled bill memoranda. And the yeah. bullet on the right is okay? We're uh, going to have to parallel it. But yes. other, other recommendations sometimes call out a particular agency if they're already taking action. So I think Maybe leaving okay. a mention of OMB in on there the benefit that they're side. already posting it is fine to talk about it in the benefits. So is everyone all right with the benefits side? Yeah. Okay. Is OMB staying on the benefits side or not? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there are other things on this page in the right-hand column that aren't structured in a parallel way. Yeah, we're going to have to, this is Tom. They, they will, they, he is in favor of having OGIS staff address parallel issues. With, without changing the meaning, I trust. Right. <laughs> yes. Without changing the meaning. Is that all right with everyone? Yeah. Okay. Um, the next change I have is in the very next. Um, Hello? Yes. Someone on the phone. Oh, yeah. This is Stephanie. I have a question um, that first in the first box where it says post an agency organizational chart and a directory listing contact information. Can we just say for offices? Do we have to say for all offices? I'm confused about where you are, Stephanie. Uh, at the top of the page. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. You were going backwards. 19. Sorry, yes. you went backwards. So the question was for the left-hand side recommendation, post an agency organization chart and a directory listing contact information for all offices. Do you have a question about offices? She wants to, to strike all. all. Can we just say just for oh, all you want to strike the word all. How does everyone feel about that? Doesn't matter. David is shaking his head no. I, I thought that was part of what we all debated for some time and we settled on, well, if we're not going to endorse listing all the employees, at least it should cover the offices. And it never occurred to me that it meant some of them. Yeah, I think that's that's consistent with what we've discussed. Everyone, if we're in, but I'm somewhere seeing, we have that we have discretion, right? 
Right, but it wasn't with regard to the office, office. information. It was with, with regard to individuals. Some may it's not seen. have contact information. Right. If they can't or don't interact with the public. I think this recommendation is, is supposed to be at a higher level. Yeah. And the hierarchy, Stephanie, do, do you follow? I'm, I'm fine with that then. Okay. I so we're leaving all in? We're leaving yes. all in. Yeah. We're all Thank in. You. I did notice as we look back at this that the bullet uh, in the right-hand column should not say uh, contact federal employees for assistance. It should be offices probably. Yes. So do we want to leave in the word federal and say federal offices? Mm -hmm. That would be my recommendation. Is that good with everyone? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. I was actually just going to point that out. All right. So, Ginger, you're good then. The, that right-hand side bullet will read ensures the public can identify and contact Federal offices for assistance. Okay. Uh, I am now on to the next block, which is, I'm going to make sure I'm, I'm following this, is now on page 20 or 21? Uh, 20. 20. 20. Um, agencies. This was just the, these are my suggestions yes. at the beginning for parallelism. It's just okay. the same, same thing we've been saying before. All right. Is everyone all right with these parallel? Parallelisms. Yes. 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 Okay. So we're starting with the words proactively in both blocks. And then um, on the right hand side, we're uh, changing from recommends to the committee includes as part of this best practice a detailed proposal regarding FOIA logs, which is included below, which is consistent with earlier changes we've been making. So everyone should be okay with that. Yes? All right, and then the next block, publish the calendars. Parallelism. Parallelism, everyone okay with that? Yes. All right, uh, page 21, top. Again, starting with the word proactively, taking out the word agency should. Um, someone wanted us to spell out million. Um, I'm fine with that, everyone okay with that? Yes. yes. Um, the public has an interest in and right to know how the government is spending its money on the right side. How's everyone with that change? Is that yes. good? Yes. Uh, I do have one change in, in that bullet. Yes. Uh, the next sentence says, uh, and I know this is probably going to be reworded slightly to be parallel in structure, but proactively publishing, it shouldn't be the top contracts because we we're, we're doing more than contracts. Right. So it should be um, proactively publishing award documents associated with largest expenditures. Nice. It's a little longer, but it's... That's nice wording, though. Awards, documents, and... I'm sorry, can you... Awards, Award documents. documents associated with largest expenditures. Oh, thank you. And then promotes accountability. Well, here's a perfect example of what I was thinking about when I said before, I hope, I trust without changing the meaning. So... I think where this is going is deleting the first sentence. That changes, that, that eliminates something that the committee. I don't think anyone was deleting the first no, sentence. No, no, it's a sentence. Well, then where's the parallelism? They didn't do it yet. No, the They're second gonna, sentence. The second just, sentence. The first sentence is not a benefit. Right, the mm -hmm. second sentence, Sean, on the right hand side, Sean is editing it to say proactively publishing instead of. Yeah, I got all so, that. So That's it will, fine. It will be changed to promote accountability. By proactively, by proactively publishing awards documents associated with the largest ex expenditures. So for parallelism, it will read like this. Is that good with everyone? Is that good? Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm going to keep moving. So then is that sentence that begins the public still in or not? Yes. 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 It's just not going to lead off the bullet because uh, the bullet's going to uh, start. Okay. With Even the though benefit. there's nothing else like that in the right hand column. I think they're. I don't object to leaving it in. Actually, I'm in favor of leaving it in. Uh, what I, this was just my example of a. Right. A, a, Parallelism issues. Okay, next um, 
rubric, we're again, just parallelism. We want to start yeah. the sentence with to the greatest extent possible. Everyone okay with that? Yep. On the right-hand side, we have a Valvo edit. Uh, would not add an undue burden onto agencies, but it would reduce FOIA requests for information that had already been reviewed by the agency. Everyone okay with that? Okay. Uh, I have best practices uh, rubric added to right before detailed FOIA log recommendation. Just for clarity. For clarity. Everyone all right with that? Okay. Uh, first sentence, to expand upon the above best practices, practice, sorry, that agencies post FOIA logs, the committee offers the following specific recommendations. Everyone all right with that change? I don't hear any nays. I'm going on. Number one, publish FOIA logs in their electronic reading rooms, often referred to as FOIA libraries, on an ongoing basis. Everyone all right with that? Yes. Okay. Uh, 2C, name of the requester, provided it is not a first party requester, i.e. someone asking for records on himself or herself. Everyone all right with that? Yep. Okay. Yes. There's an extra little. What about okay. if it's an attorney asking about a client? Is that included as a first? Party requester. Yeah, that request the the client would be considered the first party. Party requester. Okay, not always. But I take your point, Michael. The not all agencies. Some agencies will list the attorney as the yeah. requester. Oh, when the attorney is not the requester. Right. Yeah. Right. Because uh, it's the person sending in. That's where they're sending it back to. Yeah. Right. So I just want to. Well. I, I, I don't know if that's covered. I'm just saying that. It's, it's a fair question. Does everyone, what does everyone think about that? And this Although is the thing is that, that they're not the requester. So like this is technically correct, that it's the requester. Or okay. let's just think of what we're trying to say here. FOIA logs should. I mean, if it's the attorney and it's not listing their client, then that's perfectly okay because okay, be you're not listing yeah. that, that first party right. so I think the way it's written is okay but I do take your point well I guess the only problem you have is for some reason if it's listed as the attorney and not the requester and then when you get to subject matter of the request it's identifying the client and what the client's interested in so right. everything combined you you're yeah. disclosing the information that this seems to suggest you don't want to disclose, which is the first party requester type. Should we just say party staff request? Say that again. Although it doesn't really solve this issue of the attorney. Well, what, it, what usually agencies will do in that instance, though, is redact the name of the requester. I mean, the underlying client. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah, I think, right. I think what, what we have to probably do is is make a change to uh, E, the subject matter of the request, to make a yep. note that. To not include a first there. party requester's name. Yes. Okay. That's How about fine. that? That's yeah. great. Okay. All right. Everyone okay with that? I don't hear any. I'm still trying to get the hyphen out after himself. <laughs> okay. I've noted it, so I will make sure Amy takes it out. Okay, I'm at the uh, middle of page 22, best practices, colon, identifying categories of records for proactive disclosure. We have uh, an addition, in addition to the categories of records recommended for inclusion as part of the best practices for proactive disclosure discussed above. Again, it's just to make, yeah, make yeah, yeah. clear what we're talking about. The committee offers. Is everyone all right with that change? Sure. Okay. 1A, we're starting the sentence with consider. And again, this is parallelisms. The next two pages, that's all the changes. Yeah, all they're all All right. Parallel. So maybe we could just move. If everyone is okay with that, can I ask everyone to read quietly to themselves for the next two minutes? Uh, all the rest of the edits that are suggested for parallelism. And that would take us through... 
page, top of page 24, right? Yeah. Okay. Does anyone need another minute? I actually have one uh, suggested edit, not problem with any of the suggested parallel edits, but on, um, I guess it's 1D. Um, 1D. Uh, which now would begin weigh the burden of disclosure. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, my suggestion would be to, uh, it, because right now it says weigh the burden of disclosure against the benefits of public. I would reverse those and say weigh the benefit to the public against mm -hmm. the burden of disclosure, including necessary. I just think yeah. the against, you don't want the, yeah, like the benefit to be the against. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. So we'll flip it. So yes. Weigh the benefits of disclosure benefits against the burden. burden of the, yeah. the benefits to the public. You can take the benefits that whole of pu the public. Sorry, benefits to the public uh, against the burden of disclosure. Yes, and then the rest of that. Include and then we can leave in including necessary review and redactions. Yep. All that stuff. Yeah, necessary. good. Everyone okay with that? Yes. All right. Is everyone continuing to read silently through the top of page twenty-four? All right, I have no changes on subcommittee methodology, 24, on top of 25, first full paragraph. Uh, there is a suggested edit. The committee decided not to include a recommendation on the treatment of contact information. And then I think we decided at the yes. beginning of this meeting today to add four individual four employees. Four individual employees, right. Because it comes I'd up again later. Down, yeah. <laughs> Regarding. Of individual employees. Regarding? Right. Okay, yes. regarding. Is everyone all right with that change? Mm -hmm. Efficiency and resources uh, rubric, I've got a change striking bringing in talent and replacing with recruitment. We've left the phrase bringing in talent intact in at least two other places yeah. as a heading and in the summary. You want to change that to recruitment? in both of those places? I think I, I personally like bringing in talent. What does everyone else think? Raynell, do you feel I strongly like, about this I edit? I do not feel strongly. All right. <laughs> so <laughs> recruitment is struck. We're leaving in bringing in talent. Next uh, paragraph, we're going to start with two make informed recommendations. Everyone all right with that? Yes. All right, I'm on to page 26, FOIA searches. Uh, there is a Tom Sussman edit in, oh, adding a hyphen between no, non and government. Taking out a hyphen. Oh, you're taking out. It's a little hard to tell. Right. Tom is tell. suggesting taking out the hyphen between non and government <clears throat> in the second line of the first full paragraph under FOIA searches. The second full paragraph is uh, now. <coughs> I know that there's a hyperlink too. Oh. Yes. Published, thank you. We'll make sure we check Just all of those. There's another one yeah. on page 24, but okay. Because now I'm reading the red version, not yeah. the blue. Yeah. In the second full paragraph, while conducting its uh, research, apart from the data collected in agency chief way officer reports on improvements made to search procedures and technology used to facilitate them, the subcommittee was unable to locate detailed data collected by the government regarding FOIA search methodologies or capabilities. Well, that makes it. I would, I would suggest we essentially do what we did earlier because we did, re it makes it sound like we didn't review these, which we did, but the issue was that the data contained, while useful, wasn't, uh, didn't specifically say how every agency did their searches and wasn't consistent from agency to agency. So we had a fix before that I think would work yep. back there. Um, Something in the uniform. This, yes. I, I used the words apart from, so, that was the, my phrasing was so that it, apart from what is there, you, you, you're, the committee wanted more data or the. This is where we added the word nonetheless, right? Does everyone remember where that was? Seven, seven. Thank you. And you want to have, Nate, do you have a specific language? I'm sorry, Tom, what was that? I say if it stays in, it needs to go at the end of the sentence because it's, you know, 
unable to locate any data collected apart from rather than the committee apart from. I mean, yeah, there's the, the, the apart from refers to data. <coughs> oh, you would put it at the end. So while conducting its research, the subcommittee was unable to locate detailed data collected by the government regarding FOIA search methodologies or capabilities apart from the data collected in agency chief FOIA officer reports. And it, would that be okay? I would propose saying limited, apart from the limited data, and I would be okay with it. Um, and then we, before we had, on the top page seven, do we have that wording? Um, yeah, right. yeah. Yeah, I brought it over. Okay. <coughs> okay. Um, and then I would, I would say limited is a fair description. It's but it's six years worth of data, though. That's only I'm only well, hesitant to say limited. Um, okay. Well, scat scatter shot. Uh, <laughs> I just I just. Um, I mean, how about the non-comprehensive sure. or uniform? Or how about non-uniform? Well, I would just uniform. say from the sure. data collected, comma, and then do which, and then have the, which appears not to be comprehensive or uniform. It's long, but. The, the limited, well, the limited says all of that. Yes. <laughs> more limited? <laughs> Apart from the more limited data collected? Just trying to. You don't want to say non uniform data? That's fine. That's fine. Is non uniform acceptable? Yep. Mm. That was the word we had sort from of the non uniform last time. data. It seemed Logan, like that was that the okay? main concern. Why don't we say non comprehensive or uniform? And then we're it, consistent. I think you used the word uniform before, though. Yeah. We no, I'm saying, yeah, so I'm we saying did use. We did both. It was comprehensive we did, or uniform. Right, so I'm saying we should use oh, both. I see. So non-uniform, non-comprehensive? Apart from the non-comprehensive, yeah, or uniform data. It sounds really. Well, we could just say oh, limited. See, as I just actually had a part, <laughs> apart from the data, actually going back to how I read just the data that is out there, you wanted more. That way, just saying the data is also just kind of take, c captures it. You don't need a little phrase in front of it. That sounds good. I'm in favor of the data. The data. The data. Sure. It's clean. <laughs> yeah, do you guys want to vote? Oh, I want the whole thing. Logan, don't I do it. have a. <laughs> guys, I just want to. I'm sorry to interrupt. I know we're all eager. 12:35. I've got two committee members who need to leave. Um, is there a chance we could either table this or work it out in the rules subcommittee that we're going to, going to form right after this? But well, that's I, just one sentence. Like we we can yeah, do it. Um, yeah. Let's do it. Do, do we want to say? Do we want to say what it, how it reads right now? <clears throat> yeah, the data is fine. Okay. okay. The data. I see. Thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's a good compromise. Yeah. Let people form their own conclusions when they read it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Give their own yeah. adjectives. Yeah. So in the interest of time, I'm just going to move forward, ask everyone silently to read pages 27, 28, 29, nothing substantive on 30 or 31. Can't mess with the charter. So I think we're going to take a grand vote since I have a couple folks who have to leave. Can I move adoption of the report as an so moved. I don't need a second. Are we ready to vote? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Um, on the phone, folks, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, that was three. Anyone else? Did we lose James? I didn't hear James or James. I said yes. Thank aye. You. Thank you. Salvo. Um, uh, anyone opposed? All right, and any abstentions? I guess I'll continue to abstain just to be consistent with the, the view I took on the actual recommendations. Okay, and I, I'm just gonna add, I'll continue to abstain on those matters related to recommendations, uh, particularly addressed to OGIS, since I don't wanna wear multiple hats. Yeah. So um, it looks like we have a final result. So congratulations, Ooh. everyone. <laughs> Woo! I think we should all pat ourselves on the back.
Are, are we supposed to sign something as we did two years ago? Uh, I'm not sure we're going to sign it. We did not contemplate um, yeah. doing a cover letter this time. We're just going to send it up to the archivist once it's all dressed up and finalized and cleaned up. Um, but before everyone leaves, um, we do need to take the opportunity to give um, folks uh, public comment mm -hmm. time. I, I don't want to miss out on that. So I want to just turn my attention to the audience. If anyone has any comments or questions they would like to make at this time, I invite you to not step up to any microphones that are not available. Just take one of these. Um, and then Kirsten Mitchell has been monitoring our live stream. Do you have anything to report? She all says quiet. no. It's been all, all quiet, quiet on the <laughs> Western Front. Everyone is, we've exhausted everyone. Okay, uh, any public comments? Going once, going twice. All right, it looks like we're ready to adjourn. Does anyone have any other questions? Oh, one important matter before we do adjourn that I want to ask everyone. Um, as I announced earlier, we're going to renew the term of the next term of the subcommittee, of the committee rather, and I would um, really like to encourage all of you to think about ideas for the next committee to take up. Uh, if there are any particular topics that you think we didn't cover thoroughly enough this time that deserve more attention or that deserve more drilling down on, um, I'm very open to receiving those. You can give those to me now, you can give them to me later. Um, ideas for subcommittees that should be formed in, under the next committee term, very open to that as well. So anyone have anything they're burning with desire to throw out right now? Is it Nate? Um, I would recommend in general, I think that uh, and I've recommended this before and didn't catch on. We spent a lot of time discussing high level, very technical, and um, many ways very agency oriented, which is very good aspects of FOIA. I think the actual um, um, updates on challenges with uh, actual FOIA requests were missed. Um, so I think some type of quarterly update of FOIA in the news or um, current issues with FOIA or uh, something that brings actual requesters would probably bring them into the room more mm -hmm. and the actual st success stories of what's getting released uh, and actual challenges that we can collaborate and work on to fix. So bringing in the actual things that uh, agencies and requesters are dealing with. So would you envision that that would be sort of the kickoff part of the meeting? Maybe the first one, just to generate ideas about what the issues are? Um, I would actually envision it as a quarterly update. Oh, do you want quarterly update as part of the meeting itself? Sure. Oh, okay. All right. I was just trying to understand where you were going with that. Okay, great. Um, anyone else? Well, we, we spent, <coughs> excuse me, we spent a little bit of time during the last two years talking about implementation or lack thereof of the first term's recommendation. And uh, I would suggest that the, the, the third term group um, at, at the very least, trying to monitor and encourage uh, implementation of now two sets of recommendations. Okay. Uh, and Great point. I know we're wrapping up, but I would just note yep. for the record that um, we had FOIA hearings on Capitol Hill and the senators that are interested in FOIA were praised that the last subcommittee's recommendations haven't been enacted on, thinking of OMB and they're doing what leverage they have to say what's going on. So for the record, the struggle continues to get OMB to listen to the FOIA Advisory Committee. But we are not giving up. <laughs> okay, any other ideas or thoughts? <laughs> Anything I, anyone I, else wants to share? I, I, I know? did. I yes, just, please. Um, I think we never really talked about um, or, or felt that it was appropriate to address government-wide funding for FOIA programs. I think everybody agreed that there needed to be an increase um, in resources overall. Great. All right, anyone else? Anyone on the phone have any great ideas for the next term of the committee? Phone just dropped off. <laughs> okay, unless anyone has any questions, we will finalize this report, put a nice ribbon on it. Uh, we will post it on our website um, and uh, send it up to the archivist. 
and I cannot thank everyone enough. It's been a great term, and thanks everyone for all your hard work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we stand adjourned. Well, at least someone on the committee should respond in kind and thank the staff of OGIS. You've all been wonderful. Oh, us. sure. Yeah. Well, Amy's been wonderful. Absolutely. <laughs>